Hello and welcome to High School Football on WOSN. Alongside Dar Nevergal, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're at Climber Field in Columbus Grove, where the Bulldogs host NWC rival Lipsick in a game between two very good teams, Dar. A game I'm really looking forward to. And before we get started, here's Dar with some keys to the game. Well, let's look at Lipsick first, the visiting team coming in here to Climber Stadium. You know, Lipsick's got to win the third downs. You know, they got both offense and defense. They cannot let Columbus Grove continue to run the ball all day long. The other thing, too, is limit big plays, and that's always a big key for any coach. You know, you got to stop those big plays. And the last thing is control the line of scrimmage. Now, there's some pretty good-sized boys out there. I was watching them out there, you know, on both sides, you know, for Columbus Grove and for Lipsick. So, you know, you want to control that line of scrimmage. You want to establish yourself earlier on. The second day, let's go to Columbus Grove. You know, this is a big game for Columbus Grove. They came off a 7 to nothing loss to uh, Allen East last week. Couldn't get their offense going. I think for Columbus Grove, the biggest thing for them, they're going against the number one offense in the Northwest Conference. So you got a linebacker play is going to be key for them. You know, they got to get their linebackers in on every play. They got to stop Lipsick from running the ball because they're the number one rushing team in the Northwest Conference as well. So you got to stop them on that. And the other things too is, you know, protect the outside. Don't let Lipsick get on the outside at all. You know, keep them contained on the inside as much as you can. And the last thing is hold your positions. In other words, you know, You've got assignments, you've got to stick to those assignments. You can't let Lipsick get around you. You can't, you know, let them take you out of your position where you want to be. You've got to hold your position. So those are all keys for Columbus Grove if they want to win this game against a very, very good, you know, Lipsick team averaging about 39 points a game. Absolutely. Thank you, Dar. It's a beautiful night for football here at Climber Stadium. We'll be right back with kickoff after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Columbus Grove, where tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. We are about a minute and 10 seconds from kickoff between Columbus Grove and Lipsick. Again, it's Evan Skilleter and Dar Nevergal with you tonight. Now, if we take a look at Lipsick and uh, their season, actually, we'll start with Columbus Grove in their season, coached by Andy, Andy Schaefer, 3-2, and 1-1 one one in the NWC after a loss last week, 7-0 to Allen East. And a look at Lipsick, who will be wearing the white uniforms tonight. They are coached by Joe Kirkendall, and they're 3-2, and 2-0 and oh in the NWC. So a nice start to the Northwest Conference season for Lipsick. Well, this Viking team, like we said, you know, number one in offense for in the Northwest Conference, and the, you know, but their defense isn't any slouch either. They've given the least amount of uh, rushing yards in the you know per game, and you know, penalties are the lowest in the in the uh, Northwest Conference as well. So, you know, this is a team that surprisingly has two losses, I, and, and you know, they lost to Pandora, they lost to Liberty Benton. But, you know, they've got a lot of weapons out there on this Lipsick team. So Columbus Grove is really going to have to be on the ball, you know, defensively to stop this high-powered offense because they can really strike quickly. It will be Columbus Grove kicking off to Lipsick. Shep Halker with the kicking duties for Columbus Grove. And back to return for Lipsick is number six, Esteban Carrillo, the leading wide receiver on this Lipsick Vikings team. Two Putnam County foes now playing in the same conference for just the second year. Lipsick joined the Northwest Conference last season. Yeah, Columbus Grove leads this series 26-6-1. But in the last four meetings between these two teams, Lipsick has led that 3-1. So. And this kick is up and away. It'll be returned from the 13-yard line. That's Quinn Schrader, the quarterback. And sorry, that's number six. Wait a minute. Let's give it a second. And it is number three, Chase Brecht. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So the official call there as the Lipsick offense gets ready to take the field. And Dar said it. This is the best offense in the Northwest Conference. They lead the Northwest Conference in points per game at 39.6. They also have the, one of the best defense, or defenses, 19.6 points against per game. But most yards in the NWC on offense by 500 more than the second place team as they start this game with a run to quarterback Quinn Schrader, who's good on his feet, but dropped in the backfield. A good hit there by Columbus Grove on that one there. And, you, and that's what you got to do against the slippery team. You got to keep them between the tackles. You got to make them run in there. And then you got to stick it to them when you do get them in there. So a team that has the most rushing yards in the NWC, the second most passing yards 
in the NWC, the fewest penalties in the Northwest Conference, the fewest turnovers in the Northwest Conference. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> yeah, you, we'll talk I, about more does. on defense. Well, well, if you look at Columbus Grove, they do have the, the, you know, the lowest amount of, and the lowest defensive average. So Now Schrader's going to throw this one, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Shep Halker, and Halker down the right side. A big play for Columbus Grove early on as Quinn Schrader underthrows his target, and Shep Halker makes him pay. You know, that's the 11th interception this season for Columbus Grove. So, you know, they have a, a you know, ball hawking secondary out there, and, and they just pick one off right there. A little bit underthrown. You know, he was able to get up there in front of the receiver and pick that one off. Nice return, too, to get back inside the 20-yard you know, line. Thanks to Taylor's drive through and Car Wash for sponsoring tonight's replay. And Lipsick will take over from their own, or from the, Columbus Grove will take over from the Lipsick 11-yard line. I'll tell you what, nothing but would please Columbus Grove more than to, after a 7 to nothing loss last week. And a broken play there as Brenton Renner went to hand it to his left, but the runner was on the right. And so a loss of yards on first down. Looks like they'll drop him back one, second down, 11 coming up. As I was saying, if Columbus Grove can get on the board early in this game, you know, after dropping, getting shut out last week, boy, that would really up their, in their confidence level. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers split left. They'll throw it that way. It's Hawker. Hawker with the catch, wants to make a man miss. He does. Still on his feet, near the end zone, in for the touchdown. Shep Hawker with the magic toes as he beats three defenders into the end zone. He drug uh, number five there, Caleb Ellibrock, into the end zone with him. Yeah, nice, just, just a little flare pass out the outside. He was open from there, took from there, and from that point on, it was all Hawker from there. So just like that, Columbus Grove on the board first with the Dales Concrete touchdown. Dales Concrete and decorative stamping in Lipsick. Call them for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So Hawker scores the touchdown. Now he'll try to convert the extra point. Kick is up and it is no good wide right. So the score remains 6-0 here at Climber Stadium as we step aside. We'll be right back with more high school football on WOSN after this. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Tabler's Drive-Thru. Proud to be a part of the Columbus Grove community. Sure, Tabler's Drive-Thru would be proud of that touchdown early on for Columbus Grove, just a minute 31 seconds into this game. And Dar, that's a big one for the Bulldogs going up against a very good Vikings team. Yeah, they really needed that. And like I said, this is the 11th interception by Columbus Grove. So, you know, if you're going to put it out there, and Quinn Schrader is a very good quarterback for Lipsick. He's, you know, hitting about 65% of his passes. So that one, like I said, was just a little bit underthrown. Gave the defender an opportunity to get in front of the, the receiver and pull that one in for the interception. And then two plays later, you know, Columbus Grove is in the end zone. 6-0 early as Shep Hawker will kick this one away. It's still Estevan Carrillo back to return. This one's up and to the left side this time. Carrillo will grab it. He'll return from the six. Carrillo runs into a bulldog as he crosses the 20, and this drive will start from the 23. Dar mentioned Quinn Schrader's stats. 62 of 96 coming into this game. 861 yards, second most in the NWC. But he's also got the most touchdowns and the highest completion percentage in the conference. We mentioned his feet. He can run the ball too. 32 carries, 416 yards this season. That's enough for 83 yards per game. He's got five touchdowns to go He's also got with four it. interceptions on defense. Well, so all around athlete. They'll hand this one off to the left side. It's Hayden Hegel. And Hegel wrapped up in the backfield. Hegel averages 142 yards per game, and right there loses a couple. Just a great job by Columbus Grove pursuing on that one there to get to Hegel right away. You see Grove, you know, just going right to the ball. Initial hit right there by one guy, and then the rest of the team just piles it on. It's a like loss said, of one. Like I said, when you know, on the pregame, you know, that's one thing Columbus Grove has to do is they have to protect that outside as well, kind of force Lipsy to stay to the inside. Second 11. Schrader keeps this one, now pitches it outside, and it's grabbed by Tyler Lommers. 
pardon me, that's number 19, Trent Seifker. Seifker picks up about six. I think it was Hawker again on that tackle. We'll take a look at the Tabler's replay. And just that flip to the outside and defense over there just to trip him up. Picked up seven yards, so third down four for Lipsick. They split out two wide receivers to the left, one on the right. Schrader looks to pass, looking left, has oh. to throw, and he can't, and he's brought down Whoa. by big number 52, Kylan Mays. Southmore, six foot, 230 pounds, and I think Schrader felt all 230 pounds on that one right there. He just leveled him. It's a loss of seven yards, and so a punting situation here as Quinn Schrader has the honors for lip sick, and back to return is Trenton Barraza. And by the way, Quinn Schrader will be selling popcorn at halftime too, so hang That's on. That's right. Go. Does it all. Nice snap. Schrader's kick is high, but not very long. And that's going to bounce at the 40-yard line. And so a net punt of about 15, make it 20 yards. And Columbus Grove will take over from the Lipsick 43. Again, great field position for Columbus Grove to start this drive off. You know, that's not what Lipsick wants to see. They don't want to see Columbus Grove in their territory all the time. So, you know, have a really short punt, and really high punt, like we said, but, you know, just too short. Now the Columbus Grove offense with great field position, and it'd be nice for a team that only scores 18 points per game to punch two in in the first quarter, especially early on. 18 points per game is the lowest in the Northwest Conference. Renner hands this one off. Barraza cuts to the left and picks up two. Second down, seven, so it's a gain of three. See it here on the table drive-in replay there. Not a whole lot of room right there to run the ball. But Give this one back to Barraza. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe fell forward for about half a yard. Good job by the left side of that defensive line. Big 76, Peyton Lommers on the end of that. And Barraza averaging about 89 yards per game. So he's a, he's a big back for him back there. So third and seven now for Renner. He's got two wide receivers split to the left. A.J. Schaefer goes in motion. Play action, they pass back to Barraza. He's got a lot of space. He gets upfield, has the first down and more. And that's a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. That was a good play for Columbus Grow. I mean, just you know, just looking to the right and throwing to the left, find Barraza wide open on the outside out there. And nobody in front of him, really. He's got a couple blockers there and he's seen directing traffic as well, you know, and just kind of running through for the first down. Barraza, a 6'1", 175-pound sophomore. First and 10 for Columbus Grove. They'll go back to Barraza, and he spins around a tackler as he picks up a good gain on first down. I'll take that on first down. And again, that was an off-tackle run just off the left side. Big hole right there opened up by the Columbus Grove offensive line. Second down, five. The one with the two wide receivers split out left. Man moves, but he doesn't hit the neutral zone. And now Columbus Grove jumps, so they'll back up five yards in a second and ten. You could tell Renner's, you know, changing his cadence there, and then he's, then he's Clapped his hands on that one right there and drew his own guy off on side. Remember, Lipsick, the fewest penalized team, or fewest penalties in the Northwest Conference, excuse me. Yeah, only 11 penalties for all season so far in five games for 103 yards. That's pretty amazing. Another play action pass caught out on the right side. Carrillo there to bring down the receiver who doesn't actually go down. Shep Halker, the guy making the catch. 
Yeah, good job by Carrillo just to, to hang on to him and not let him get away from him. So third down, four, pickup of six. Here's the snap. And now they're going to have to run this one as the quarterback Renner goes down. Yeah. Tripped up by number 55 out there for uh, Lipsick. Isaiah Camarero. Camarero. And. Trying to see if they think they're going to try to kick this one. It'll be a 37 yarder, 36 yarder. That's Shep Hark Hawker again, you know, doing the place kicking. Kick is up, and that's going to be short and right. So Lipsick holds. And the offense will come back out onto the field, trailing 6 0 on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Start from the 20 yard line on the left hash. So, again, this Lipsick offense has been great, but so far, Columbus Grove's been up for the task. Lipsick just needs a big play right here, just kind of get their momentum going. Looks like they really haven't got the rhythm yet in their offense, but boy, I'll tell you what, if you give them. Give him an opportunity to get the rhythm going, you're in trouble. This one passed quickly out to the right side. It's caught by Jace Brecht. Brecht gets about seven yards. Nice little distraction in the backfield on this one as you see the fake. And that was Kyle Hopkins who threw his hands up in the air. And Brecht has, uh, that's his 12th catch of the season, 116 yards coming into this game. Pickup of six, so second down four. Schrader takes the snap. They run it up the middle, and a nice pickup. That'll be enough for a Union Bank first down, as that's Kyle Hopkins on the ground. Pardon me, it's Hayden Hegel. I'll tell you why. You watch this one, Evan, on the replay. You know, you see Columbus Grove was stunting on that one there. They were going to run. It kind of looked like they were going to run a blitz off that one side there, and Hegel ran right by him. <laughs> First down from the 35. Two wide receivers split out to Schrader's right. One goes in motion. It's Trent Seifker in motion as they go right up the middle. And Hegel picks up a couple. So, so you get these these guys in the backfield for, for uh, Lipsy going, and you're in deep trouble. You know, you got to stop not only Hegel, but you got to stop Seifker as well. Trent Seifker on the carry, rather. Picked up four, second down six. Carrillo's coming in. He's got 82 yards coming in this game and a touchdown as well on the ground. And looks like we've got a timeout on the field. No signal. Maybe it's an equipment malfunction there. So we'll redo the down. Winded down under three minutes here in the first quarter. Two split out right, one to the left. Eagle right behind. Schrader takes a snap. He'll hand this off. Eagle, left side, right side. Again, it, you know. Lipsick on the running game. We talked about their, you know, their rushing, you know, you know, averaging almost 272 yards a game on the ground. You know, that's amazing for, for a high school team. You know, but then, then you throw in their total offense, 454 yards per game. Third down, two. Schrader. He'll hand this one off. Eagle trips and Ooh. falls right before the first down marker. And I think he'll be short. 
We'll see what they have to say. Yeah, that's going to be about half a yard short. Fourth down and six inches. He got his leg taken out from him by a Columbus Grove defender right there. I think this is a no question. You're going for this for sure. When you, when you can run the ball the way this team does, you're going to go for this. Schrader has Hegel behind him. Schrader trying to get him to jump offside. I think Coach Kirkendall might take a timeout. No, nope, he backs up. Play clock's at one. They run it. Hegel oh. gets the first down, but just <laughs> barely. It's another he worked for that one. First down. <laughs> wow, he got hit by three guys right there when he hit the line. He had to. He just had to bury. He kept his legs moving. That's the only reason he got that first down. Columbus Grove was definitely on top of that play. They knew he was going to give it to him, and he's going to come right towards him. Ball just across the 45-yard line. Same formation, two wide receivers out right. Seifker goes in motion. He'll carry this one, gets a block from Hegel, trying to get the edge, but he's brought down in the backfield. Trying to get a number of who that Columbus Grove defender was. But. It's Trenton Barraza on the far side, dropping him for a loss of six. It is military night tonight. The Columbus Grove team wearing camo uh, jerseys and making it a little difficult for some of the numbers to be read. Jerseys purchased by the Columbus Grove VFW and donated to this program. They're wearing the names of relatives or friends or neighbors that have served. Schrader looking to pass now, rolling out right, trying to make some guys miss. Now he's gonna run. And Schrader picks up a couple before he's hit hard by big number seven. That's A.J. Schaefer. Almost Matt. caught in the backfield on that one again. You know, so Columbus Grove is really, their defense has really came to play tonight. Like I said, they're only giving up about 12 points a game. And Columbus Grove with the 6-0 lead as we step aside second quarter. Coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Called Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Welcome back to Columbus Grove where it's third and 13 for Lipsick. Trying to put some points on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Still 6-0 Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove with a touchdown following an interception on their first drive of the game. Evan Skilleter and Darn Evergall with you, as well as a whole crew of WOSN folks. And it is a beautiful night for football. I mean, it's a little cooler. You know, temperature's starting to drop now. I heard it's supposed to be in the 30s sometime this weekend. Schrader throws this one, and it's intercepted. Barraza picks that one off, and Barraza's headed up the right side, and a nice return after the interception as Columbus Grove will come back out, picking off Quinn Schrader, just the seventh interception he's thrown this year. Actually, I believe it's sixth. But 12 interceptions so, so far this season for Columbus Grove. So, you know, if you're going to put it out there, boy, you better be right on the money with this uh, Columbus Grove secondary because they really go after it. Like you said, you can look across the board at all the interceptions they've got, you know. Zach Reynolds with three interceptions. Uh, Landon Schrader with two. You know, four or five other guys with one apiece. And so that's uh, Barraza's second interception this season. So it's first down and 10. Ball starts on the 38-yard line as they pitch it out left to Barraza. Barraza trying to get the edge, and he's brought down by Mr. Hayden Hegel. It's a loss of two. Second down, 12 now after the big loss. They'll stay in shotgun. This is Quinn. Brenton Renner. Renner with the snap, looking to pass. 
Once again on the right side, it's Hawker, but it's over his head. Incomplete third down 12 now for Columbus Grove. Now this is gonna be an interesting third down play for Columbus Grove. You know, what do you do with this one here? You know, they've been successful somewhat with that, that out pass like that, but that one there you saw a sell over the top of his, Hawker's head. But you know, you know it, you know, Lipstick knows that they're probably gonna go to the air again. So they're gonna be out there trying to figure out how to stop him from that. Runner alone in the backfield this time, looks to pass over the middle. That one's intercepted. That's Quinn Schrader. And Schrader drops the football. Lipsick able to fall on top, so the Vikings take it right back. A little bit of a pass and catch for, for both teams right now. That's Quinn Schrader's fifth interception of the season. Again, that one's a little bit underthrown as well. Schrader looked look like a duplicate of the first interception Grove had. As Ellibrock, I think, fell on the ball for Lipsick on the end there. So Schrader's thrown two interceptions and picked one off for, on his own. And he'll come out, try to lead this Viking offense to their first score of the game. Schrader running the option, cuts inside, picks up a couple. Looks like they'll give him about three yards, second down seven coming up. Just looks like Lipsick has not got their offense in, in, in the rhythm yet. You know, and credit the Columbus Grove defense because they've really shifted around. They've made some changes a little bit, you know, altering their different, you know, play, play stances and that may be confusing Lipsick a little bit. Now Lipsick wants to throw, Schrader, little shrug. Now he throws and a nice comeback route as it's caught on the far side. It's Carrillo over there. And it's good for a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Nice job by Schrader to get out of there. Hard smash there at the end by Columbus Grove. Ball up to the 43-yard line. Trips out to the left side for Lipsick. Schrader rolling that way. Still looking, still looking. Now puts it on the ground, and he's wrapped up. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Tell you what, Evan, that was a tough one for Schrader because he was he's running to his left. He's got to kind of turn his body if he's going to throw that ball. Columbus Grove had the defender, you know, def that play defended back here in the secondary really well. So he really didn't have an opening if he's going to try to throw that one downfield and put anything on it. He's been under pressure quite a bit tonight already. Second down 10, they hand this off to Seifker. Seifker wrapped up in the middle of the field, but he picks up a couple. Nice tackle there in the middle of the field by Kyle Mays, Kylan Mays, excuse me. Yeah, that was a hard hit on my Mays as well, you know. Looked like he was gonna spin out of there and get out of there, but nope. Run into big number 52 right there. So it's third down seven. Lipsick splits two out right, one down to the left. Eagle lined up behind Schrader. Schrader rolling right, but he's oh forced my. down, and a nice job blitzing from the outside by Columbus Grove as Landon Schrader with the big sack, and Lipsick will be forced to punt. I'll tell you what, one thing we didn't mention in pregame is that Lipsick coming into tonight had only punted four times. Yeah. This is number two in the first half. Fourth down, 18 as Schrader heads back. Barraza back deep to return. Snaps high, nice catch by Schrader. He just gets it away, but this one might be shorter than the first as Barraza comes up, makes the nice grab. And he 
got it right at midfield. That's the play of the game right now oh, yeah. as Barraza did a nice job because if that ball hits the ground, you might lose another 10 or 15 oh, yeah. yards on the roll. Now, some coaches may say, hey, I think we'll take the 15 yards rather than the tough catch, but he made a nice play. Yeah, when you see the ball coming down like that, Barraza says, ah, I can handle this, you know. There's nobody around me, is there? But again, another short punt by Lipsick, which means it shows that, you know, they haven't had to punt that many times. Like you said, only four times coming into this game. It's obvious. Barraza will run this one up the middle. He's met after a gain of one. Interior of the Lipsick defensive line is great. Right there, Isaiah Camarena with the tackle. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of room in the middle there to run the ball. There's four guys right there for Lipsick all over that. I'll run this one to Barraza again, this time on the left side, and it's a great pickup as he's close to a first down. As a matter of fact, he does have another Union Bank first down. Well, that was a nice play right over the left side of, the, you know, of his offensive line and just kept moving forward, and they were just keeping great blocking right there you see by Columbus Grove. Two rec receivers out left. Barraza lined up behind Schaefer. Renner, rather. Schaefer, the up back. And Renner's going to keep this one, and he runs into a few tacklers. Hayden Hegel there first. Looks like big 77, Seth Apple on the tackle as well. Yeah, Seth Apple, he's a senior. You know, six foot five, 220, 206 or something. Second down nine. looking for a change of play. Now takes a snap, it's high, he gets the pitch out to Barraza. Barraza up the right side, breaks a couple tackles, tries to cut inside, doesn't get past the last tackler, but still a nice gain for the Union Bank first down as he is inside. Now flag comes out. He's having a quick chat. Personal foul against Columbus Grove. Oh, that's a tough one there after a nice run by Barraza. So that'll push him back to the 29 yard line. It'll still be a first down. First and 10, Schaefer goes in motion. Snap a little bit high, they get this handoff to Barraza, but he's met in the backfield. Apple back there, but I think first it was Severino. Tommy Offenbacher back there as well. 77. 77. Clock at the five minute mark now. Second and 11 for uh, Columbus Grove. Just another one of those little short passes out the outside. See if we can get anything over there. Runner rolls left, throws this one. Nice pass as it's caught. That Hawker again. It is Hawker on the far side, and it's enough for another Union Bank first down. Well, that was really a nice pass by Runner. You watch it here on the Tabler driving replay. I mean, he went right over the top of the defender to throw that one in there. Not a big window over there to hit the Hawker on, but he found it. Ball up to the 18-yard line. 
clock stops at 436. Pitch this out left, it's Barraza. Barraza tackled in the backfield again. That time it's Camarino again. Man, he's been in on a lot of plays so far for Lipsick on that defensive side. Seeing another Tabler's replay. They stop getting into the legs of Barraza. Now that's what you got to do with because Barraza is a pretty good sized kid up on the top part of him, so you got to knock his legs out from under him. Barraza with the catch out right, and oh. Barraza loses his footing. He had a chance to break Boy, off a did. big play. Yeah, there was only one defender that he had to beat on that outside for six points. And you see the frustration as he you know, put his hands on his helmet and says, oh, man, you know, and nothing but daylight in front of me. So he gets back to the line of scrimmage, third down 10. And we're going to have a timeout called. It's called by Columbus Grove with 328 on the clock in the second quarter. It's 6 0 Columbus Grove. Tonight's first down sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back to Climber Stadium where it's Six nothing Columbus Grove. They've got a third and ten from their own or from the Lipsick 18 yard line. I'll tell you what, if Columbus Grove can punch this in and go up, you know, going into to the locker room up, you know, 12, 13 to nothing, man. Against this high powered Lipsick offense. So third down 10, 328 on the clock. Just put two wide receivers out left, two out to the right. Renner looking to pass, throws to the end zone, and over his target incomplete. And a fourth and 10 coming up. Yeah, that they was missed intended the, for Zach Reynolds out there. They missed the field goal on the last attempt from about the same distance. Get a replay here. Well, that would have been a tough catch if Reynolds would able to bring that down, but that was just way too high for him. So two wide receivers split out left. Barraza lined up behind Renner. Renner rolling left. Wants to throw, now does, throws to the end zone, and it's knocked down by Lipsick. And who else but Quinn Schrader back there to knock it down as Lipsick will take over. A runner, you know, rolled out to his left. He had a couple guys crossing right there in the end zone. Schrader was right in between the two of them, and he's even knock it down. Just shows what kind of a defensive back he is. Right in between them. So a low scoring affair, 6-0 on the Hawkers drywall scoreboard. Only one Dales Concrete touchdown so far. And a tough field position for uh, Lipsick right now, starting out on their own 18-yard line. In motion goes Trent Siefker. And Schrader brought down once again. Columbus Grove getting into the backfield. Both of these defensive lines have been terrific as Kylan Mays again in on the play. <laughs> tell you what, Kylan Mays is playing out of his mind right at the moment. You know, he's on, on every play. If you want to run over that side of where he's at, forget it. He says, nope, this is my territory. Go run the other way if you want. I mean, the young man is only a sophomore too. Whew. Yep, big boy. A lot of tackles right now for Columbus Grove, second and 11, Lipsick. Passing left, floated up there, and almost intercepted. But I'll tell you what, pretty good defense by Br Jace Brecht to break up that 
near interception by Trenton Barraza. And a little three on three there, you know, both both players with number threes, and he just tried to, you know, Schrader tried to loft that over the top of the defender, and Barraza said, no way, you're not going to get it over me. Well, you got to be impressed with Columbus Grove's defense so far here in this first half. They've just played out of their minds. Now a run on the right side. Good pickup by Eagle, and here comes the flag. And you might have a targeting. I'm not exactly sure, if I'm honest, how yeah. the rule works in high school football. We'll take a look here. Oh, yeah, yeah head to head. Certainly a dangerous, dangerous tackle. Yeah. Now, I don't think anything was malicious or intentional about that collision, but we'll see what the referee has to say. Personal foul, it is targeting. And so a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, like you said, Evan, there was nothing malicious. I think he just got in there at the last minute as the runners were coming down. You know, he just happened to be there. You know, but it was, it was definitely helmet to helmet. 220 and counting. Lipsick still with three timeouts. Columbus Grove with just two. Schrader looking to pass, come back route. Nice grab. That's Trent Siefker. Quinn Schrader's determined that time that nobody's going to pick that one off. He fired that thing into uh, Siefker. And so the ball up to the Columbus Grove, 49. Schrader looking to pass. Now pulls it down, pulls it back. Now throws, and a nice touch pass, but through the hands of Zach, or excuse me, that's Estevan Carrillo. It looked like Carrillo was going to come back a little bit. He was kind of backpedaling on that one there, you know, as the ball went over his head. So it looked like he ran his route, and he saw his quarterback was in a little bit of a problem, so he came back a little bit, but that, you know, that just floated over him. Had a little meeting in the minds right there between the quarterback and his receivers. Like a visit to the mound there, man. That's right. <laughs> Second and 10, Schrader again throws, and this is over the head of his target. And he threw that a little bit before Jace Brecht could get an eye on it. So third and 10 now. That's pretty much been the pattern for the Vikings here in this first half. They've just been out of sync just enough. I mean, you know, they made some nice passes, but a lot of them been just either over their heads or just out of their reach a little bit. So. I think that's the reason that, you know, Schrader is meeting with his receivers you know, to figure out what, what's going wrong here. So Schrader trying to get something going on third and ten. Quick pass left side, caught by Hegel. Hegel trying to get upfield, breaks one tackle, and then forced out of bounds by Shep Halker. He picks up about two in a fourth and eight upcoming. Looks like Lipsick will punt this one away as well. Yeah, the Vikings need a good punt on this one here, too. They can't afford to have another short punt here and give Columbus Grove, you know, with a minute 30 left, anywhere near, you know, the 40-yard line or anything like that. you got to get it back here to Barraza back here. Schrader will punt. Fourth and eight. And Schrader might fake this one. Now he kicks it, and that's a good-looking kick. Barraza makes the catch. Barraza trying to make a guy miss, but he's wrapped up and brought down. Looks like they'll give him about the 14-yard line, so a minute 20 left. Columbus Grove with two timeouts. Now, Evan, what do you do if you're a Columbus Grove in this point here? You know, you got a minute 20 left. You got a six to nothing lead going in here. You played great on defense the whole first half. You, know, you kind of just keep running the ball and run this time out, go into the locker room up six to nothing. You know, I think regroup. so. This is a good defense. Yeah, you don't want to take a chance of throwing it downfield and have it picked off and turn the tables on you right off right when the first half's ending. They will keep it on the ground as Barraza picks up about seven yards on first down. 
That's a good first down run right there. Seven yards, I'll take that any day. A hurry up offense here for Columbus Grove. Quick pass right side. Caught by Zach Reynolds, and Reynolds picks up a couple more. Yards short of the first down, so it brings up third and short. We're wasting no time. They want to get as much out of this plate in this last 44 seconds as they can get. Third and one. Renner, Barraza to his left. Renner rolling that way. Wants to throw, he does, and it's caught. Barraza, enough for the Union Bank first down. 30 seconds on the clock. Enough to stop the clock as well, so they'll get another couple plays in here. Nice out pass here by Renner. Ball up to the 32. Renner to pass, throws, and another catch. And another Union Bank first down. Shep Hawker. Hawker. And Hawker did a nice job of getting out of bounds, too. 25 seconds, that only took five seconds off the clock. Chains are set, ball at the 48. Renner, some time, throws, and incomplete. Just to the right of his target, Zach Reynolds. Five more seconds off the clock, and second and 10 coming up. I'm not sure how Render got that out of there in the first place because there was two defenders standing right in front of me. He threw it right in between them. Two wide receivers split either direction. Here's Renner again with some time. Now no time as he runs right into the tackler who brings him down for the sack. Isaiah Camarano again. And I think oh. that's going to be it for the half as Columbus Grove watches the clock tick down to zero, and it's six nothing here at Columbus Grove at the half. The Bulldogs on top of the Lipsick Vikings as we step aside. Second half coming up after this on WOSN. Welcome back for the start of the second half at Columbus Grove, where your scoreboard is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 6-0 the score on that Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Columbus Grove on top of Lipsick. Evan Skilleter and Dar Nevergal with you tonight. And Dar, not much offense in that first half. It certainly wasn't. I'll give you a few stats on that first half, you know, which was dominated by defense on both sides of the ball. but. You know, Columbus Grove total offense, total yards 107. Lipsick just 56 total yards in that first half for a team that averages 454 yards per game. You know, Renner, a 8 for 13, 74 yards for Columbus Grove. Schrader, 4 for 9, 39 yards, two interceptions thrown by Schrader. Uh, Braza, you know, 10 carries, 46 yards. Uh, Hawker with five catches, 56 yards. And Hagel just with six carries for 23 yards. And that's a young man that comes in leading, you know, these uh, Lipsick in the Northwest Conference in, in rushing. And, you know, just 15 or 23 yards in that first half. And just give credit to Columbus Grove's defense for that. You know, they forced him to stay to the inside, didn't let him on the outside too much, and was able to just, you know, once one guy hit him, then he had two or three other guys hit him as well. So, you know, but I'll tell you what, it, it just, you know, a brutal out there. Some of those hits out there between the, both these teams, you can tell, you know, they just hammered each other. So this ought to be an interesting second half. It's a nice new NWC rivalry brewing between these two schools. This kick is away. It'll be, well, it's dropped at the 24 yard line. It's picked up by Hawker. Hawker looking for some space and a nice return for Columbus Grove as they get the ball out past the 40 yard line up to about the 43. And that was one of the things in the first half too. Columbus Grove had some good field position on a couple short punts by Lipsick, you know, but they weren't able to really capitalize on it to get good field position again here starting the second half. Maybe they can, you know, put a sustained drive out there and, you know, punch it in again. But, you know, 
neither team's really gotten into any kind of real rhythm. You know, Columbus Grove came out firing right off the bat, interception, touchdown, you know, went up 6 0, and then kind of died after that. They'll keep this one on the ground on first and 10. Barraza oh, gets through the line, picks up Union Bank first down, and gets into Viking territory. Good start to this drive for the Bulldogs. You got to like Trenton Barraza. I mean, he's a big kid, he's tall, you know, you know, not overly, you know, big in that respect. But boy, once he gets through there, he's got some speed when he gets in the secondary and he flew right past the linebackers. Brent, Brenton Renner changing up the play. Still trying to figure things out. He's got eight seconds on the play clock. I think we just audible on that one there. And he'll keep this one on the ground. Barraza with another nice pickup. And that's going to be another Union Bank first down, says the referee. Two big runs in a row for Trenton Barraza. It looked like, an, you know, just a duplicate of the first run he had, just breaking right through there. You know, nice blocking up front for him. Schaefer goes in motion. And here they go on the ground again. Barraza again right up the middle. Makes a couple guys miss. He is eventually brought down as he gets the Union Bank first down. Touchdown saving tackle by Tyler Lummers. Wow, I'll tell you what, the Columbus Grove, I don't know what they talked about in the locker room, but their offensive line is just really opening up some holes right here. You know, and he's finding that little crease there, and he's making something big out of it. And why not? Right back up right the middle. there again. Barraza makes a couple guys miss, dives for the end zone, and he's in. How about the effort from Trenton Barraza and the offensive line of Columbus Grove? What a drive for the Bulldogs. Just, well, what a drive for the Grove and what a drive for Barraza himself. I mean, just, you know, four great runs right there. Again, just breaking tackles. Once he got into the linebacker area, he just broke right through. Columbus Grove with the 12-0 lead. Hawker back out for the PAT, 0 for 1 today. Snap and hold are good, kick is up, and that one splits the uprights. 13-0, Columbus Grove on top on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. As we step aside, you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Tabler's drive Through. Proud to be a part of the Columbus Grove community. Back to Columbus Grove High School, 13-0. So Columbus Grove starts the second half like they started the first half with a touchdown in the first minute and 40 seconds. Yeah, and I, I you know, it's interesting to see what halftime adjustments that you know, Coach Schaefer came up with because that one there, he looked like he says, you know, we're gonna come out here in the second half and we're just gonna go right off you know, it looked like he was going right off the left tackle mostly on that run that let, you know, Barraza get into that secondary. And, you know, great, you know, blocking up front, pushing the guys away, give him that little bit of a hole that he can run through, and then leaving it up to your big back to say, okay, now that you're in there, let's see if you can punch it. Kind of a little shock for Lipsick too, coming yeah. in here. You know, bam, you're all of a sudden, you're down 13 to nothing. Absolutely. And they ran the same play over and over. <laughs> they couldn't stop Same it. spot. Couldn't stop it. So Hawker will kick this one away. It's Estevan Carrillo back to return. This one's going to be a little bit short. And returned on the left side. That's Caleb Ellerbrock. And Ellerbrock with a nice return. And the Vikings start out with some decent field position this time. They need to get a little bit of confidence and get a little bit of rhythm in their offense right now that just haven't happened in the first half. They've had some nice plays in the first half, but nothing consistent so far. And they really need to get the running backs into the game. This drive starts from the 39-yard line. Hegel lined up behind Schrader. Two wide receivers out to the right side. They'll run it with Hegel. And Hegel, with a nice hard run on first down. Picks up four, second down six. 
I said, he goes just 23 yards in that first half. Came into this game, you know, as sort of the leading rusher in the uh, Northwest Conference. Two wide receivers out to the right side this time. Schrader on second and six. Quick throw right side, and that one's caught. Good hands by Jace Brecht. And Brecht gets close to the first down, but he's about a yard or two short. I'll tell you what, Evan, on that pass play right there, you watch it here on the replay, give credit to Carrillo on this one right here as he seals off the defender right there and he leaves the, allows the uh, receiver to be open then. Third down, one. Schrader, quick one to Hegel. Hegel up the middle, has enough for the Union Bank first down as he crosses into Columbus Grove territory. And the Vikings really need this drive. They need to really put, you know, sustain a long drive, need some time off and clock a little bit, but establish themselves, establish their run and their passing, you know, passing game together. First and 10. And this time they hand it off left side. That's Mike Jimenez. And Jimenez picks up a couple. Looks like they'll give him two. Second down eight. And the clock stops. Helmet came off of the runner. So Jimenez will come off the field for a play and it'll be second down eight. That's Jimenez's first carry of the game. So Schrader has Hegel lined up behind him. Looking left, quick throw, and that one's caught. Let's see here, looking for a number. That's Carrillo on the far side. Raider just got that pass out to you. See here on the replay, just about batted down at the line there. Play goes for five yards, so a third and five coming up on this play as we're under eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Eagle still in the backfield, and Schrader play action. Comeback route, that one's caught. Nice pitch and catch there as Trent Seifter gets the reception and another Union Bank first down. You're seeing a pattern here developing for Lipsick. I mean, a lot of, you know, a little quick passes right over the middle. He's finding the guys and open it, you know, in, in the middle. Then he'll mix it in with a little bit of a heagle running the ball. This is the offense for Lipsick who expected to see the whole game. They're finally starting to put it together. Steve here's going to pass again, rolling out right, and now throws at the last second, and it's caught. Good looking play there. <laughs> <laughs> looked like Schrader was going to get brought down. A little shovel pass, it looked like, you know. Schrader completes it to Seifker, or no, excuse me, that was Hegel. And he did a nice job of keeping inbounds, waiting for the ball too. So one yard pickup, second down nine. This is Hegel and he's wrapped oh. up in the backfield and I'll tell you what, that was quite the push from the defensive line. Looks like a Lipsick Viking is shaking up on the play. Oh, check, nice. check this out right here as he just gets blown up. Oh. It was a, the guard trying to pull to the left, Ethan Zisloft. And he got bumped into the play, and so it's a eh, maybe a loss of one. Third down, 10. And this is a big third down play for Lipsick. They really need to get this one converted. They need to keep this drive going. Schrader looking left this time. Schrader Look wrapped out. up and goes down. A big sack for Columbus Grove. 
As Dylan 61. Bryan gets in there. Wow. That's a loss of around 10 yards. Check out the Tabler's replay. Oh, Bryan just came around that edge there and just, you know, split right through the defenders or through the offensive guys and just brought him down. So Schrader will go back in punt formation. Barraza back at the six yard line. This will be the fourth punt, I think, for Lipsick tonight. Doubling their season <laughs> total. And Schrader gets that one blocked. And that's the risky run when you try to roll out like that, like it's rugby style. That was Landon Schrader, I think, on the block, too. So Columbus Grove gets good field position as you take a look at this one. See, I don't, I don't mind the rugby style and rolling out to the right, but you have to get rid of the football. Yep. You got to kick it a little bit sooner than that because you gave the defense that much time to get in there, and it's bound to happen. So Columbus Grove starts this drive from the Lipsick 48. Not what the Vikings wanted to see because, again, Columbus Grove starting the drive on good field position inside Viking territory. And you can see a healthy you know, dose of, I think, Mr. Barraza again on this one. And they're going to run play action. Oh. They're throwing this one over the top, and it's incomplete. Not a bad-looking ball, but just over the right shoulder of Shep Halker as he was looking over his left. But a smart play for Columbus Grove. I mean, yes. to get a, get a block punt, come right out and go right at him and see if you can put six on the board right off the bat. No harm done, second down, 10. And it's a different quarterback in the backfield. Looks like Zach Reynolds is lined up in the quarterback slot. And Reynolds is going to run this one Wildcat style, but runs right into about four defenders. You know, Eagle there first. Vikings did a nice job of bunching up there in the middle and not letting him find a hole. They're going to stick with that formation. Third down, eight. There's Reynolds, and he slips as he tries to pitch it out. He finally gets rid of it, but Barraza has nowhere to go as he's gobbled up in the backfield and loses four yards and a fourth down coming up. Boy, Caleb Ellibrock was in there in a hurry. Get a look at the replay here, and you can see him slip right on that C. And a dangerous pitch, but still gets it away. But a good job by Lipsick to react to it, too. Schrader and Siefker back to return this punt. A little bit low. Kick is up and off the right side, and that goes off of Columbus Grove and should be down right where they touched it at the 27. So nothing on the board for Columbus Grove on that drive. Lipstick's offense will come back out. Still empty tonight for the best offense in the NWC thus far. Yeah, they just have not gotten anything going. I mean, and give credit to Columbus Grove's defense because they've made a lot of different switches out there you know, to kind of mess up, mess up the minds of these Lipstick Vikings. So Schrader back in the shotgun. And he keeps this one, pitches it outside. Here's Siefker. Siefker trying to find the edge, and he's brought down for a loss. Good pursuit there by Columbus Grove as Landon Schrader picks up the tackle. It's a loss of about four or five yards as you get a look at the replay. Good job there also by Mitchell Ellerbrock keeping the outside and not allowing Seifger to get the edge. It's a loss of four, second down 14. This time two wide receivers out to the left side. Schrader. 
looking to pass, steps up in the pocket. Now throws, and this one's gonna be incomplete. A dangerous pass and a double coverage, but it's over everybody's head, and a third down coming up. Well, we talked about one of the keys for Columbus Grove coming into this game was the play of the linebackers, and they really had to step it up tonight, you know, and play their best games. And you watch the linebackers for Columbus Groves, and they're, you know, they know what Schrader can do with the ball, and they're dropping back as soon as he goes in and starts into, you know, running out of that pocket. You'll see the linebackers are starting to drop back a little bit. They're counting on the guys up front to put the pressure on Schrader, but they want to make sure they're back there covering up that middle section there for, you know, take that pass away from him. Third and 14. Stepping up, passing, complete to Seifker. Seifker is close to the mark, but I believe he's going to be, well, they actually give him the first down up to the 40-yard line. I, hey, I'm up here, and they're down there. That's right. A little bit short. We'll get a look at the replay. Maybe I'm completely off base as you see the completion, and he's got to get to the 40-yard line. That falls well short, but that's okay. Referees are human too. Yeah. Not taking where his knees was, taking where his helmet was. Big break for Lipsick though, to keep this drive going. Run this one oh. to Eagle, and he runs oh. right into that defensive line. My goodness. Looks like 58 on the bottom of that pile. Leighton Blankmeyer. 52, you know, again, Mays out there. Just boom. Yeah, Mays right there, you know, you ran right into him. It's a loss of a yard, second down 11, as we are near the two-minute mark in this third quarter. Quick moving game, both teams Boy, really keeping the ball on the ground. Not a lot of penalties in this game, just, you know. Hand off left side, Hegel looking for the edge. And Hegel finds a couple, but not much there as he's back to the original line of scrimmage. Can't run it inside, struggling to run it outside. Good pursuit Good down that line, yeah. Columbus Grove defense. Yeah, Columbus Grove got down there in a hurry, you know, down along that line there. We're not going to let him get around there. That was another key that we, that we threw in there for the start of the game was, you know, don't let him on the outside either. Force him to stay on the inside where they got to run into your interior line. It's third down and a long nine. It's the ball just past the 40-yard line. Schrader rolling out right. Wants to pass. Needs to get rid of it and can't. Another sack. This time it's Tad Cook. Cook drops Schrader for a loss of about eight or nine yards, maybe more. And again, great coverage by the secondary for Columbus Grove, taking all of his receivers away from him. He had no choice. You know, he, he didn't want to take a chance of throwing it downfield and having it picked off, so he had to eat that one. But good job by Cook to come around that corner there and just, you know, chase him down. So Lipsick will now have to punt this one away. Schrader, nice punt this time as Barraza will have time to return. Barraza, left side, nice cut. And he crosses into Lipsick territory oh. and a big hit. And yeah, that's, that's going to be a targeting that's as we have a couple referees throwing flags. That is textbook targeting. Doesn't matter what body part you hit him with if you hit no. him in the helmet. And we got a lot of people. Work. We got Schrader coming off and hobbling off the field as well. We're gonna get a look at this one. And certainly not a hit that you like to see, but both players look at least like they're able to get up. Boom. Yeah. Ooh. And I got a Lipsick fan down to my left saying you hit him with the shoulder, but it really doesn't matter if you hit him in the head. It's an issue. Yes, it is. So 15 free yards for Columbus Grove. On a good return by Barraza, too. I say free. That's not fair to Mr. No, Barraza who took that hit. He paid for him, no doubt, as the ball goes up to the 24-yard line. And he is out of the game. I'm sure he's getting evaluated. We'll see what happens. He almost whiplash on that one there because his head really spun around. 
Now they'll run this one up the middle. It's Landon Schrader in for Barraza, and he has a nice pickup on first down. Well, the Vikings cannot afford to give, let Columbus Grove punch in another one right at this stage. They haven't been able to develop any offense of their own, and they sure can't let Columbus Grove go up by three scores. It's a gain of two, or maybe three. I see second and eight, but we'll figure that out when we come back from break as the third quarter ends with Columbus Grove on top, 13-0, to right here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back, where it's second and seven in Columbus Grove, and they run this to the right. The ball comes out. And Columbus Grove picks it up and advances a few yards. And good no news for Bulldogs fans as it was Tr Trenton Barraza with the carry. And also good news, they got the fumble back. Yeah, looked like Kyle Lather out there picked the ball up. I think that surprised everybody when the ball came out because nobody really paid attention to it. It's kind of just rolling there. Goes for three yards, so it's third down and four. They'll line up with two wide receivers split out left. Peraza right behind Quinn Schrader. Schrader wants to pass. Now throws. Barraza's got space. Barraza has the first down, and he goes down near the 10-yard line. And it's enough for a Union Bank first down. Well, you got to be impressed with that young man because he's really having a game right now. Not only running the ball, but there you see him catching the ball as well. And once he gets out in space like that, he's got some speed. You don't want to let him out there. Ball's at the 12-yard line, so it is first down and 10. And this time in the backfield, it's Zach Reynolds. Reynolds takes a snap and he'll try to run up the middle. Runs over his own li lineman as he gets up to the six yard line. We've seen this a couple times in the second half. Zach Reynolds taking the snaps. Kind of running a wildcat type offense. And trying to go over that right side again. So a pickup of six, second down and four. Still, Zach Reynolds. Reynolds running to the left side. A flag comes out. He gets into the end zone. But with that flag down, may come back. Yeah, maybe a holding on that one there. The referees having a quick chat. Now they'll make the call and yeah. Is holding against Columbus Grove. Get the replay. Looks like the hold was right there in the middle. Two guys on the ground and it's Ky uh, Kylan Mays. <coughs> so with the loss, it brings up second down and 13, maybe 16. Tough to tell from this angle. Yeah, a tough break for Columbus Grove, and it looked like they were going to put another six on the board. Now they'll run this out to the right side, and Lipsick gets into the backfield. That's Caleb Ellerbrock with the tackle. Along with Perillo back here as well. Another look at this one. Unblocked in the backfield and shakes off the stiff arm. So third down, 20. And not the direction you want to go in, that's for sure. I mean, after you get six points, you think they have it taken away from you. Schrader wants to pass, throws out to the right. It's caught. It'll be short of the first down by maybe 12 yards. But a nice pitch and catch as A.J. Schaefer makes the catch, and we'll see what 
Columbus Grove tries to do here. The field goal would be about 32 yards. A nice catch there by Schaefer, though, reaching out there to pull that one in and still being able to come down and keep his feet in bounds. And the field goal unit will come on. They've got 14 seconds on the play clock, as you see on the right side of your screen. Down to eight seconds. Might burn a timeout. Might have to if you want to, you know. It's enough pressure on the kid as it is, but then he's got to kick it. And that one is good. good. Whoa. So with no time on the play clock, they make the field goal. Shep Halker. Now one for two on the day, and it's 16-0. Columbus Grove on top, nine minutes to play. We'll be right back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 16-0 on that Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Columbus Grove on top of Lipsick trying to hand them their first NWC loss of the season. So far, the Columbus Grove defense has been absolutely huh. tremendous in this one. Hey, it's just amazing that they've been able to shut this uh, Lipsick offense down completely. We've Still got, got nine minutes left to go, though, in this game, so anything can happen. But. Quarterback Quinn Schrader is trying to stretch out a, a calf, it looks like. As this one returned up the middle, up to about the 20, we'll give it the 30-yard line. And I'm not sure Schrader is going to enter this game. So it's going to be Tommy Offenbacher at quarterback, I believe. Yeah, Offenbacher coming in. He's three for five so far on the season, 60 or 51 yards, or 61 yards and, you know, a touchdown pass. but. Offenbacher with a big job here, trying to get his Vikings back into this game. He's got Hegel lined up behind him. Seifker goes in motion. Offenbacher looking to pass, throws it down the left side and out of reach of his target, Carrillo. And he almost completed it to Schrader down there on the ground. So second down 10 coming up, 8.47 on the clock. Yeah, this is a tough position for this young man to come in. He's only a sophomore, 6'1", 170 pounds. And you put him in this when your team's down 16 to nothing and against a defense that's been playing pretty much lights out all night long. Offenbacher wants to throw again. This one's long and it's intercepted. There's a flag down, but for right now, it's an interception by Columbus Grove and Luke Groach. Flag down at the 39, or sorry, the 29 yard line, but it's in the area of holding. So we'll have to see if it's holding, this play can stand. We get a look at the replay. Just aired that one out just over the, you know, the head of his receiver. So I'll tell you what, this Columbus Grove deep in secondary just eats up interceptions. So the call by the referee is an illegal chop block against Columbus Grove, and this one will be declined. And or Sorry, it's against Lipsick. The penalty will be declined, so Columbus Grove will keep the football. 8.33 on the clock, and Columbus Grove looking like they're going to really pull away in this one. Yeah, if they put six more on the board or even three more on the board, it's going to be a long road for Lipsick to try to come back on, especially when your starting quarterback is sitting on the sideline right at the moment. So right here we've got Zach Reynolds at quarterback as he runs this one to the left, cuts back inside, some space up the middle. Looks like he might have enough for a Union Bank first down, and he does. So it's first and goal for Columbus Grove as you get a look at the replay. I can't say enough for Columbus Grove's offensive line. They have really done their job tonight. They've opened up holes for their running backs, Raza, and now with Reynolds as well. You know, 
And even when they, you know their quarterback goes back to pass, and you know they've been able to hold their blocks and just keep you know Lipsick pretty much out of the backfield. They send Schaefer in motion. Now they'll run it out to the right side, up the middle, and it is good for a Dales concrete touchdown. Nice run there by Zach Reynolds. And Columbus Grove takes a 22-0 lead as we get a look at the Tablers replay. Again, great blocking up front. Gave him a lot of opportunity to find a hole. He has picked his way through and right into the end zone. Shep Halker back on for the PAT. Kick is up, and it is good. 23-0, your score here in Columbus Grove. The Bulldogs on top of the Lipstick Vikings. 7.51 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Climber Stadium. It's fourth down and four for Columbus Grove. Four yards to the goal line, and they're going to go for this. Renner under center. Renner. Sends us out to the left side, and they're not going to get in as Schaefer's pushed out of bounds. And so a turnover on downs, and the Lipstick offense will come back out. A good job by the Viking defense on that one to pursue down the line and be able to stop him short of the, in the goal line. Get a look at the replay here, and the carry was actually Lawson Mag. Jimenez was the one that came, you know, Fought off his, uh, his blocker and was able to make the tackle on that one. Can be the first guy to hit him. So this drive starts from the five yard line. Offenbacher still out there. Two wide receivers split out to his left. That's Jimenez lined up behind him. And they'll give this one to Jimenez. Running left and Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. This Columbus Grove defense should be proud of their efforts oh, tonight. Absolutely. I'll tell you what. No doubt about it. I mean, they've just done everything they were supposed to do. I mean, their defensive backs have been covering really well. Their linebackers have been dropping back and then, you know, pursuing down the line, you know, outstanding. You know, their, their defensive line has just been, you know, head on, you know, just forcing the running backs to, you know, to either one side or the other. You know, they're taking the outside away and they haven't given up anything on the inside. So I don't know what else you can ask of your defense and what they showed tonight. They Plus they picked one. off three passes as well. Lipsick runs this one up the middle. And it goes for a good chunk of yards. We'll see where they end up. It looks like just shy of the first down. So a third and one coming up. I'll tell you one, one thing, Evan. I mean, they want a shutout. There's no doubt about it. You know, they're thinking, you know, we, we have played the number one offense in the Northwest Conference, and we're going to shut them out. Third and short, under two minutes to play. Jimenez lined up behind Offenbacher, takes the snap, gives to Jimenez, and it looks like he's got enough. And he does. It's another Union Bank first down. Again, stay tuned after the game for an interview with Columbus Grove head coach Andy Schaefer, as well as our Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner. Down to a minute 30 left here in the game. Offenbacher hands to Jimenez. He's wrapped up, and he'll be brought down. That's Ethan Johnson with the tackle. Yeah, Ethan Johnson, mountain among men out there. Six foot four, 305 pounds. Goodness gracious. <laughs> and they've been running a lot of plays this direction, too, and I don't blame one bit if you got that big. Biggest size on that side of the line, just keep running at it. If you're Columbus Grove on offense and then on defense, he's just a mountain. Down under a minute, Jimenez will run this one and again hit at the line of scrimmage. And 
They don't have to run another play. See if they do, but either way, a big win for Columbus Grove as they move to four and two, two and one in the NWC. Lipsick will fall to three and three, and it's their first loss in the NWC. How about the effort from the Columbus Grove Bulldogs tonight? Uh, you know, I, I don't know how you could draw it up any better than what they did tonight. I mean, they did, they did everything they needed to do on defense. You know, they they their, their linebacking crew, the defensive backs, all did what they needed to do. It's just a great outstanding, and they they ran the ball well. You know, they put Lipsick back on their heels, didn't give them good field position all night long. I mean, everything that they needed to do, they did tonight for this big win. And following a seven to nothing loss to Allen East last week, they come back and shut out Lipsick 23 to nothing. So again, your final, it's Columbus Grove 23, Lipsick 0 here at Columbus Grove. We'll step aside, but stay tuned. Our interview with Coach Schaefer and the Stolly Insurance Hustle Award coming up after this on WOSN. Back here with Coach Andy Schaefer. Coach, congratulations on the win. I want to ask you two questions, one about the offense, one about the defense, right? So your offense started out a little bit slow, only six points at halftime, but you guys came out on fire in the second half. What were the adjustments made at halftime, and what got you guys going? Uh, honestly, in a real calming voice, I said, stop making mistakes. I mean, we had some penalties. We had some, uh, you know, a, a, an interception that was thrown and, and, and just guys not really doing what they're supposed to do. And I said, there's no there's no new plays or anything like that. It's just to execute. And, uh, you know, that first that first drive, we ran the same play. I think it was five straight times. Same formation, same play. We got in the end zone. So it wasn't cute. We just we just got physical. Excellent. So for the first five weeks of this season, Lipsick is the top offense in the Northwest Conference, uh, one of the best passing teams, the best rushing team. Your team pitched a shutout. Uh, how do you feel about your defense and what was the um, really the – Yeah, it's really simple. <laughs> it's really simple. Our linebackers, uh, you know, Tad Cook in the middle, A.J. Schaefer on the outside, and uh, Landon Schrader on the outside. Those three linebackers just had hits. I mean, this is – I'm sure Lipsick's saying this is the most physical team that they've seen. Uh, they were playing on all, all cylinders, and uh, those three are, are our captains, they're our leaders, and uh, certainly I showed it. You know, the word I was going for was emphasis, but it works. It's late for me, too. Congratulations on the win, and, and keep it rolling, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your support. Yeah. That's Coach That's Andy Coach Schaefer, and now it's time for our Stolly Insurance Stolle. Hustle Award winner. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And, Dar, a lot of good candidates tonight, but we're going to go with Trenton Barraza. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we could have gone on the offensive line and the defensive line for Columbus Grove the whole bit and everything, but Trenton Barraza really set the table for Columbus Grove tonight. And when he started out the second half, he just blew right through Lipsick's defense and, you know, went right in for the touchdown. So, he really is the guy that really carried a lot of the offense tonight. You know, the quarterback did a nice job as well, but Trent Barraza really had a good game. Absolutely. So, again, your final score from Columbus Grove. It's Columbus Grove 23, Lipsick 0. I want to thank the Columbus Grove Athletic Department for their hospitality tonight and want to thank our great crew, Director Wayne Getz, replay Derek Henry, and on cameras, Jacob O'Neill, Seth Hegemeyer, and Marshall Jordan. One more time, your final score, Columbus Grove 23, Lipsick 0. For Dar Nevergall, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night, and God bless.